Hey everybody, Doug Addison here. Welcome to Spirit Connection, January 2nd. It is the New Year. Happy New Year to you. And I got a word for you right now, actually. Some people are looking back right now, and I just got this word, don't look back. I just heard the Lord say that. Don't even begin to look back right now. Just keep going forward. The Lord has something new for you this year. I'm releasing the prophetic word for 2019, and it's a powerful time. We've got the chat room if you're in with us live. Uh, we've got the Inlight Connection team in the chat room. You can chat in your questions, and I'll be doing some Q&A a little bit later. Plus, going to talk about how to go deeper with what the Lord is releasing. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you that the, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So that's what we're doing tonight. We testify the goodness of the Lord. I just ask right now, every storm in your life, I ask, Lord, every storm in the people's lives, everything that's been coming against us will now actually be brought into focus and be broken. That's what the Lord's doing right now. And he's, he's revealing and he's healing. There's all kinds of great stuff going on in Jesus' name. Amen. DougAddison.com is my website. And we'll have the replay on this uh, up later. So don't worry if you missed anything. So uh, this is the prophetic word for this year. And it starts, of course, with January as well. But this year, your book of heaven is going to open. And in fact, the proceedings in heaven are already taking place as we speak right now. And I'm going to get into more of that later. But there's some things that I'm going to release to you and activate to you that's going to really help prepare you what's happening right now and what's coming. So I had an encounter in December and I heard the Lord say that he's moving in 2019. Very similar to how he went into ministry in Luke chapters 3 and 4. So I'd recommend, uh, if you don't have a Bible, get one. It's your first step to spiritual growth. But if you look at Luke 3 and 4, when it actually lays out what the Lord's going to be doing this year, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, and the heavens opened, and the power of the Holy Spirit came down upon him. This is what's going to happen this year. The heavens are going to open. The power of the Spirit's going to come in a greater way. And the Lord speaks his name. Uh, he says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And, and some things. Jesus, you know, went through some stuff. He went through the wilderness. He got out of it. Now, let me just release this to you, what the Lord gave me. Uh, I go into it a little bit more detailed later on uh, this year. In fact, I'm releasing two free podcasts this month on this where I unpack this uh, much deeper than what I'm doing right now. So Luke 3, 21 and 22, this is where Jesus gets baptized. He was praying and Jesus was praying and heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him, him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son in whom I love and whom I'm well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he entered ministry which was significant in according to this word. So get ready for the Lord to open the heavens. It's already started. I've already started experiencing it. The heavens are going to open in a new way. There's going to be a new baptism. Now, that can be a confusing word based on, you know, what your belief system is about that. But the new power of the Holy Spirit, a new infusion and and, and, and infilling of the Holy Spirit is going to come this year. Uh, the Lord's going to speak to you about your identity. That's what he did in Luke 3 when he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. He's going to speak to you about your calling and you're going to receive revelation and power. God's going to open your book of life. Watch this. It really does move together like uh, Luke 3 and 4. He's, God's also going to move on millennials this year. People in their 30s, not limited to that, of course. But it's a group of, uh, of people that the Lord showed me that it, when uh, it said that Jesus was 30 years old when he went into ministry, I tell you, the Lord said, I'm going to move on 30 years old. It's not, it's, it's not uh, limited to that, but you got it. And I'm believing that for my family as well, that God's going to move on this group of wonderful people that have been on hold, by the way, 
because their time has not yet come, but the time is now. It's going to open this year. So we're going to see the wilderness time end. And when Jesus went into the uh, Luke 4, 1 and 2, this is still that prophetic word out of Luke 3 and 4, starting at 321 and moving to through 4, 18, 19, right in there. So Jesus, uh, he saw, he was uh, full of the Holy Spirit. He left Jordan. He was, and this is Luke 4, 1. He, uh, he was led into the wilderness and he was tempted during that time. So listen, there's people right now that you're going to receive the power from the Holy Spirit. God's going to get you through wilderness time. Some, some people will go into the wilderness right after this as a testing. Others have already been through the wilderness. Thank God. But the Lord told me that the wilderness and, dry, and dark nights of the soul are now going to come to an end for many people. So many people have already been walking through this, but don't I, you know, don't live in the dark night. My goodness, some people camp out there. They send postcards. Hey, uh, I'm in the dark night of the soul. You know, get out of there, you know. Get in the bright day of the spirit. That's what I say. You know, some people camp in the dark night of the soul, wear it like a badge. Oh, man, get out of there. Just move towards the light of the Lord. And uh, so here's what's going to happen. Still in the prophetic word over Luke 3 and 4. In, in uh, Luke 4, 18 and 19. This is the first public ministry Jesus does. He doesn't even heal anyone yet. He steps up and he was in a synagogue. They open the scroll and he reads Isaiah 61. This is in Luke 4, 18 and 19. And he gets up and says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, if you look at Luke 3, 22 through 4, 21 in your Bible, you're going to see this process that I've been talking about. And one of the things that happened was Jesus got up and he spoke publicly the, basically, the, the, the prophecy about himself. And then he said, in your presence, this is now fulfilled. Now, that was pretty wild. But this is one of Jesus's Let's say it was his mission statement or, you know, it was his guiding Bible verse, you know, it was who he was. And he got up and he spoke that. And this was when the book was open. The book of heaven was open and he proclaimed this. So God going to say, I tell you, he's going to do this for you this year. And this is my mission statement as well. God's going to send you to preach the good news, whether you're a preacher or not. You need to proclaim the good news. You don't have to preach. You don't have to quote Bible verses. Just go encourage people, love them, build them up right now. If they get turned off to the old way of, you know, the Bible, then try a new way of just encouraging until they're open for something else. Give them encouraging prophetic words that I recommend because people are going to really come alive this year. And he sent you to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, uh, to people in the pain of sickness, uh, to help those who are spiritually or physically blind. He's going to set, send you to set the oppressed free. Now, watch for your book of life like Jesus has did to open this year. He told me this is the year of his favor. This is the year where he's going to open things up. And he, like I said, he's going to move on 30-year-olds. You know what? I was When the Lord gave me this back in December, I, he took me back to my journey. And back in 1988, I'd come out of the occult. It's when I first came to Jesus for the third time. If you know what I'm saying? I'd been around. I'd been back and forth, in and out of the church. And then suddenly, I had this encounter with Jesus in 1988 at Berkeley, uh, California. And and I was um, coming out of the cult. I was coming off of drugs. I was, you know, wasn't exactly in a really good place, but I was with the Lord. That's what counted. And I was 30 years old. This was 30 years ago, right now. I was 30 years old when the Lord gave me my first prophetic word. Sitting there, I remember so clearly. In 1988, I was sitting in my uh, one room. I think I rented a room from some guy, you know. And I was sitting in there praying. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I said, Lord, speak to me. And I heard the words distinctly in my spirit. Isaiah 61. I didn't even know if there was an Isaiah 61. I plop it open. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. The very same thing Jesus used in Luke 4, 18 and 19. It has been my life calling. I tell you, that was my life calling ever since. 
It's been my guiding. So, uh, you know, if you don't have one, you can borrow mine or Jesus's, you know. As I studied Luke 3 and 4, the Lord began to speak to me and show me new things, you know. And I was, I was saying to the Lord, this is just in December. I said, when I got this prophetic word, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to release this to the world. I'd like for you to speak to me. I know I hear the Lord all the time. But I thought, wouldn't it be cool if he spoke something very personal, like he did with Jesus? You know, he opened it up. I heard the Lord say, he said, look at Luke 3.28. I pop my Bible open to Luke 3.28, and it's the, uh, it's the um, uh, genealogy of Jesus. And... Uh, excuse me, yeah, verse 28, the son of Addy, A-D-D-I, my last name is Addison. He said, he said, there's your confirmation that I'm doing this in people this year. He put my name in the Bible. I, I didn't really know if I remembered it previously or not, but it was there. And I may have seen it before, but I'm just saying, this was in December. And he's, because I had asked him for a personal confirmation that he was doing this in people. There it is. Maybe you might not get your name in the Bible, but he's going to speak to you some way, through a song, through something. So I'm praying that the Lord will speak to you about your calling. And again, if you don't have one, like a verse, guiding verses, you can borrow Jesus's and mine. Uh, Isaiah 61, Luke 4. It's going to be an amazing time. The Spirit of the Lord is, a not, uh, is upon you because He's anointed you, and there's a new anointing coming. So when Jesus comes out of the wilderness, angels are there. You know, it, that, there's just angels that, that come. It doesn't record exactly, but uh, it, we know that the angels came and ministered to Him. Uh, I meant it didn't record exactly right there in Luke, but I know that there was other places where angels were working with Jesus. And Hebrews 1.14, are not angels ministering spirits sent to those who, who will inherit salvation. That's us. God is sending. This is a prophetic word right now. He's sending ministering angels to serve and to help you. Angels are going to be uh, manifesting. Now, I always say to people, don't worry if you don't see them. They don't cross the, they don't cross the plane into the, into the uh, natural uh, world too much because it distracts what God's seeing. But the Lord said to me, we're going to start seeing manifestations of open eye visions, encounters, and angels this year. It's going to be on an increase. God's assigning angels. He's going to help you to fulfill your calling. And the angelic realm is going to really be activated around you. So he also gave me this word that the watch and the timing of the Lord is being restored. Now, this is an unusual gift. Not a lot of people have it. I have this gift. It's, it's an Issachar type of anointing. It's Habakkuk 2.1. And I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look and see what the Lord may say to me. Now, notice it says he didn't listen. He looked to see what the Lord would say. And this is the, uh, the gift that the Lord's doing. It's the watch, the watcher gift, the watch of the Lord. Prophetic intercessors are going to rise up this year. And the Lord's going to use you crucially right now. During this time, I'm a prophetic intercessor. In fact, I get up at 4 a.m. every day. I have a job in heaven because I'm a watch. I'm a watcher in the spirit. I, I just get up to see what the Lord's doing, see what he's saying. So the Lord's going to raise up prophetic intercession groups. and They're going to get the plan of the enemy in advance to help, to help stop attacks, weathers, disasters. Uh, that's some of the things that I'm doing right now and uh, breaking attacks around me. Place, places like that. There's also the Issachar anointing that's coming. First Chronicles 12, 13, uh, excuse me, 32. The sons of Issachar understood the times and seasons and knew what Israel should do. So there's a, times and seasons gifts are going to be activated right now. Men and women all over the world are going to start getting this. Get ready for this. God's going to release wisdom. We need the wisdom from the Lord and not the wisdom of man. I want to tell you, the wisdom of man will not work this year. It will not. It's going to flatline. There's going to be no fruit. There's going to be nothing. You'll need the wisdom of the Lord. That's why I've been praying and decreeing uh, Isaiah 11, the seven spirits of God. I pray them every day. I say the spirit of the Lord, that's the first one. I ask these to come down into me, to me. You can do this. Isaiah 11, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge, 
uh, and the fear of the Lord. Now, notice they come in pairs, you know, except for the Spirit of the Lord, of course, but they come in pairs because there's power in agreement. And God's going to bring a new agreement. He's going to bring new people around you right now. You're going to see things start to happen in this way. Watch this happen. Now, I had a dream. I think it might have been December 2nd, 2018. Uh, we were vacationing in Mexico at the time. And I had one dream while I was there. It was very prophetic. In fact, I had to get up and write it down. In the dream, I was releasing on the internet, or I don't know if I was on the internet yet, but I was about to release my 2018, or excuse me, my 2019 prophetic forecast. That's what I'm doing right now. But I had my old handwritten journals out. And I know that those were well, right around 2006, I stopped using them. And in one of my journals, this is the dream, I was reading something and I, I didn't know if it was from Bob Jones or, or William Branham, the prophet, very powerful prophet from the 1950s. But in the dream, it was a riddle. And in the riddle, and in real life, I don't remember this, the, uh, this part, but in, in the dream, Bobby Connor uh, said that he recognized that was Bob Jones. He says, yes, that sounds like Bob Jones. He didn't say it was Bob Jones. He said it sounded like Bob Jones. I had just had an encounter, and the Lord says, I'm going to start giving words to people that are similar to the late seer prophet Bob Jones. These are the mysteries. These are the, it was the seer, uh, my friend Larry Randolph and I would joke that you need to understand Bobologies to get those mysteries. And so uh, in the dream, I said this, the mysteries of the numbers of reconciliation are now going to be released. And I then stopped everything in the dream and I got my uh, Inline Connection team uh, to get this prophetic word out to the world. So that's what I'm doing now. This was given to me, uh, this part of it was anyway, which was the mysteries of, um, let me get it right, the mystery of the numbers of reconciliation are now being released. Now, I didn't quite understand it, but then the Lord gave me two verses. Matthew 18, 23 said, therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. And the second one, second, uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that God has destined for our glory before time began. So this mystery that the Lord is talking about, that's why the Lord gave me the word that you can't use worldly wisdom. 1 Corinthians 2, 6, another confirmation. We want to rise above those other things. God is right now. He's balancing the books in heaven. That's what Matthew 18, 23 is. The kingdom, the king wanted to settle accounts. He's now balancing the books in heaven. It's going on right now. He's bringing mysteries, things that were hidden that the God, uh, the, from the beginning of time. And even says, you know, that Jesus himself would utter parables. They were mysteries. Uh, hidden before the beginning of time. So here's what happened to me in December after I have the dream. Over the next few weeks, I start getting encounters and downloads about times and seasons and numbers in my own life. I wish I had time to even explain them. Uh, I, can't, I don't, but they were amazing. I mean, cycles of 49s and, you know, it was on the 49th day and 49 weeks and 49 years all on the same day in December. And uh, the Lord said, I told you, I was going to unload this stuff. I'm going to download the mysteries right now of uh, times and understanding numbers. And so that's been going on with me. But in the middle of all this, I want to say this to you. Expect to get hidden revelation come to you. Things that have been holding you back. Things that the enemy has been, uh, you know, hitting you with. Like for me, last year in 2018, I was able to get healed of uh, this ailment no one could find for four years. 2017, I got healed of multiple chemical sensitivity and Lyme disease. 2018, I got healed of another thing. I'm standing here healed because I got the revelation of what the enemy had been doing behind the scenes. So this is going to come for you. Maybe it'll be finances. Maybe it'll be a physical healing. I don't know. But, you know, you when the books are being reconciled, like right now, you have to go through the reconciliation. I've had to do this. 
That's where the Lord examines your life. He points out things that needs change to take care of. It's not full judgment on you. It's not anything weird. It is just like uh, something the Lord's going to do. And this always results in major promotions. I've never seen this happen during the month of December and January. I don't think I have before. I've seen it happen in different times. But this is big, opening up right now. So, remember, this dream I, I had was December 2nd. Then on December, December 13th, my book of purpose opened in heaven. I had an encounter. And I tell you, December was probably one of the more spiritually active times that I've ever seen, both positive and challenging. Uh, and I started having major encounters with the Lord in the courts of heaven. And at the same time, I was having major resistance during, uh, you know, by the enemy during over the last few weeks, uh, you know, as, as high as high as it was, I had some low times. But, you know, I believe the high, I believe the Lord and I hung on to those things. And I'm giving you this word right now that you need to hold on to what God is saying right now. You don't have to go through this rough time like I just did because I have a prophetic gift that's very similar to Ezekiel 24, 24. I'm a signs prophet. That means that, that my entire life is a prophetic word. Whatever happens, all my attacks, everything that happens to me. You know, if I get in the car with someone's happened so many times, I get in the car, they drive the wrong way. They even know where they're going. They drive the wrong way, uh, you know, like for miles. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, I'm a science prophet. You're going the wrong way, you know. Uh, and weird stuff happens around me all the time. And I've had to get used to that. So when I'm going under a heavy attack like I did in December, I knew this was something kingdom-wide. I knew it was bigger. That's why I kept holding on each day. And we're seeing the breakthrough now. So the Lord has been speaking so much revelation about the mysteries. You know, I started to decree uh, uh, just the, the verses all about the, the spirit of truth and the mysteries for a couple years now. Now they're starting to open. Last year, the Lord started sharing me glimpses of the mysteries, just the glimpses that I would have. Uh, you know, the book of Revelation contains some of the most amazing uh, things, but we, we seem to have it wrong because the stuff that people are saying isn't really happening. And the Lord, I'm not being judgmental here. The Lord said he's going to release a big mystery right now. And so if you look at the book of Revelation in chapter 10, you'll see something. There's a little book, a little scroll. This is like a, a book of life, but it's big. The Lamb's book of life is a bigger, uh, bigger setting but you have your own book of life, according to Psalm 139, 16. You have a book of life. Jesus had a book of life. There's the Lamb's book of life in the book of Revelation. Now, in Revelation 10, uh, there was that little scroll that was open. And then the, the voice of the seven thunders spoke to John with all the revelation and understanding about what was going to happen. And he says, the Lord says, seal it up till the times of the end. Don't write it down. And uh, in verse 4, he says, it will be sealed up until the times of the end. I want to tell you, people are, are talking, you know, uh, prophetic words. Of, I'm not being judgmental. The Lord said this to me. He says that, that there's, there's been all kinds of uh, speculations because about the book of Revelation. But it's, it's kind of hard to, to understand it until those... Uh, those seven thunders speak. The mystery gets revealed from Revelation 10, 4, and the sun, th seven thunders, and the little book gets opened. I tell you, we're moving into a season. I'm not saying that specific book, but we're moving into a season for these types of books to start opening. Books in heaven are not physical. They're, they're spiritual understanding. And the prophets have spoken out of these books the Lord's about to do things either at your own level, at your church level, at the city level, business, whatever it is, or even bigger. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm just saying right now is a time when we've kind of missed the, the second coming of Jesus. Uh, I almost, I wanted to write a book. I'm kidding here. It would be Jesus never returned. Now what? And, it, you know, is because we missed that. But, you, you know, if you look at what Jesus said, he says, he goes, I don't even know. He says, I don't know. I don't know that time. Neither do the angels, only the, the Father. He says, but you can know the season. That's what I'm saying is stick with the season. Don't try to get dates and things like that. 
uh, and don't be disappointed if they don't happen. God still, I tell you, things are still in play. And uh, so here's, here's what the Lord spoke to me. He gave me this word, and I've been getting this for over a year now, maybe even longer, way longer, actually. It's part of my 17, I mean, my, my uh, 50 days encounters uh, behind the veil in heaven back in 2017. I had one of those days where the book of uh, Revelation and Daniel was open to me, but I don't remember. All I knew is I looked at the clock in real life, and I had been having a three-hour encounter with the Lord like I always did, but it got sealed up. I don't remember anything, but something big was coming. I knew that. And then the Lord says, he, he said to me, I'm preparing people right now for revelation that we need to get through this time because listen to me, the enemy is over attacking. He's over attacking. He is over attacking. Don't believe it's the Lord with all these storms and violence. Uh uh. We're about to get something. And so the Lord said to me, He said, Listen, the book of Daniel is actually the book of Revelation for the Old Testament. It was that Jewish version of the book of Revelation. Daniel, starting in Daniel 7, he has this dream of the four beasts, and it was, you know, four kings to rise up, and they could be demonic kings. They could be, uh, like with the things in the spirit, they're both physical and about the future. They're, they're multi-level. Uh, Daniel 8, he has another vision, uh, you know, and uh, about some things, a ram and a goat, and it was very symbolic. But then the Gab Gabriel, the angel Gabriel comes along, and he interprets it for him, and it makes sense, sort of. And then, uh, once these things started to happen, you know, with if you look at this, if you just, you know, try not to understand all the stuff in Daniel. Just look at the process, because the Lord said this process is now happening. He said, look at what happened in Daniel. Right around, Daniel starts, you know, uh, he was in a time of captivity uh, with the Babylonians, uh, and he was carried away under King Nebuchadnezzar, and he suddenly, he's interpreting dreams, he's doing things for the Lord, he's getting words, then suddenly he himself has a vision. Even though he's a dream interpreter, he only has one dream recorded in one vision. There was a doozy, a couple of visions. But listen, it was once this came, once Gabriel came, and uh, the man came in, in Daniel 8, then Gabriel came and gave the interpretation. That's when the books started to open. In other words, heaven's coming to earth, beginning to give revelation into things. And once this happened, then suddenly you'll see it in, in Daniel chapter 9. Daniel understands this. He understands the Bible, the scriptures. He understood the, uh, he understood the prophecies. He had gotten revelation once Gabriel came and opens this understanding. The spirit of revelation starts coming and flowing. He understood that from the prophet Jeremiah that their captivity was only going to last 70 years. He's looking at the calendar. He goes, that's right now. And he starts the Daniel fast. He starts fasting and praying. And in Daniel 10 through 12, it's the end times open up. It's the book of Revelation for the Old Testament. And he sees Jesus. Actually, he sees the Son of Man before Jesus even came. He interacted with Gabriel, the, the archangel that, of, of Revelation. He interacted with, with Michael who opened Gabriel. Michael didn't do anything except open the way for Gabriel because there's so much uh, there's so much warfare because it's during times like we're in right now when we need a word from God. So Daniel was given mysteries that he didn't understand. Look at Revelation 10. Again, look at this, not in what's what's in there, you know, like all the details you get all might get confused, but look at the process. Once he starts opening up and asking the Lord. You know, the Lord, Gabriel uh, came, I think, no, it was Michael who came and says, you know, hey, highly favored man, man of high favor, you know, from the day you started to pray, your prayer was answered. That's why I, Michael, have come to give you revelation, but I was detained for 21 days. And so this is similar to what's going on right now. There are things being opened for us. There's revelation. The books of heaven are about to be opened. And in, in Daniel 12, verses 8 and 9, this is what Daniel said. He says, you know, when he heard Gabriel giving him the understanding uh, of, he says, I heard, but I do not understand. 
So I ask my Lord, what will be the outcome of all this? And in verse 9, uh, he replied, Go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the times of the end. Now, listen, this is that Daniel, uh, I had heard the Lord back in December. He says, I'm going to open the book of understanding. I, I look throughout the Bible. Where the heck's the book of understanding? I see the book of truth. That's, that's the one. I see the book of life. I see the Lamb's book of life. But I really didn't see the book of understanding, even though I figured there must be one because he gives us understanding, right? Then the Lord showed me, he said, just read Daniel chapter 12, verse 8. He said, I heard, but I didn't understand. Then in verse 9, roll it up and seal it till the times of the end. The Lord said, that level of revelation is now going to be unsealed because he did not understand. This is a, you know, a, this is a book in heaven. And the Lord said to me I, on several occasions, very similar to Daniel, we're going to start getting revelation into situations, into how to prosper during downtime so that we can have finances to help these cases where cities are being wiped out. We're going to be given revelation how to bring an entire city to the Lord in one day. We're going to be given revelation for these things. I'm telling you, this is why things have been delayed because the uh, second coming of Christ has been delayed because there's a billion people who need to be part of it. Uh, the billion soul prophecy that uh, we started in Light Connection to fulfill this with the late prophet Bob Jones. He came and gave his whole life to this billion soul prophecy and they have not happened yet, but they will. I tell you, they're going to happen. There's a billion people yet to be reached. That's what the book, the books of heaven are now about to be opened to reach people all over the world, all ages, all. We're going to see something. Now, listen, a major court case is going on right now. It started on December 30th. Now, I get up at 4 a.m. I do my thing, you know, I pray, <clears throat> you know, I go into a heavenly place. I, I use the Bible and the Lord begins to speak to me. And on that morning, the Daniel 7 Ancient of Days court opened. Now, if you've heard my teaching, I do, I offer this on my website and some of my online webinars where I unpack. I've done three of these trainings about the courts of heaven. Well, the Daniel 7, 10, right there is when the books are open, right in that area, is like the Supreme Court. And it's, uh, people ask me, why do you talk about the, the courts of heaven so much? You know, we're New Testament. Why do we need this? And suddenly, you know what? My eyes were opened greater than ever. And the Lord had spoken to me. He says, he asked me this question. Why is the Ancient of Days Daniel 7 court mentioned in Daniel 7, during an end times encounter. Listen to me. This is wisdom and revelation being opened right now. There's this end time encounter. Suddenly, the courts of heaven open. Daniel 7, 10, the courts were seated. The books were open. They just pop in the middle of this end time revelation. And it's because the courts of heaven are actually going to be needed in our New Testament time. For us to receive and understand and to get the New Testament version of this, which is Revelation chapter 10. I don't know if you're grasping this, but this is why the courts of heaven are now starting to open and become very, uh, you know, uh, very powerful to operate in. That's why I've been training people on. I didn't know this part here till December where the Lord said that to me. But listen, on December 30th, I was taken in in the spiritual realm my encounters bible opened to daniel 721 and i was taking it in in a vision right when i read it that's how it works with me i see it in the word first and then i have the vision and the interaction listen daniel 721 it's going on right now and as i watched this horn or demonic force was raging war against the holy people and defeating them then until the Ancient of Days, that's the Lord, pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High, and the time came when they possessed the kingdom. Now, listen, this is, if you read this, this is part of the encounter that Daniel had. And then suddenly, not only the Daniel 7.10, you know, Ancient of Days court, 
But now there's this one part here where Satan was raging war so bad that the holy people were being defeated. I don't know. Last time I checked, it looks like that. And then the Lord began to pronounce favor and judgments, favor and judgments over the holy people and they, so that they could possess the kingdom. I tell you, this is happening right now, even now. It's still going on. I got taken in, in uh, on December 30th. And so right now the court proceeding is being is this listen i didn't know this encounter was going to happen we had already planned to do this training and uh stuff i'm going to be doing this month on your book in heaven's going to open i got that revelation ahead of time then suddenly i have this encounter just a few days ago and it was a confirmation that not only is your book opening the lord is moving right now He's moving on your behalf, on the behalf of cities, nations, businesses. This is huge that he's moving now so that we can possess the kingdom, so that we can actually, because we've been defeated, uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, resistance, a lot of warfare, but I tell you, court proceedings are being handled right now. They're underway. I've been the last few days, uh, the last three days, actually, maybe more, I've been in these each day. And the Lord began to reveal the hidden assignments of the enemy. That's what he what he was doing. He began to, uh, it wasn't automatic. I still, you know, he might reveal something like he did. Remember, he revealed the the plans uh, for uh, David to build the uh, the temple, uh, but his son Solomon actually had to build it. And he gave the plans for Noah to build the ark, but he actually had to swing the hammer. So when he gives you the strategy, it's not like he's going to do this automatically. You have to battle for it. You have to contend for it. And so right now, God is doing something. Your book of life is opening. Your book of purpose, like mine did on, the, on December 13th, I think it was, uh, it opened. And suddenly, within a few weeks later, the Lord is contending now and showing things. And again, I'm a science prophet. That means that these are going to be happening as, with you as well. God's going to reveal things. They're going to, uh, you know, in other words, the courtroom of heaven is now opening over you. So he's going to bring healing and forgiveness to broken relationships. So here's how you can prepare is, is, you know, go and look for anything. Repent of any sins, judgments, shore up as much as you can right now. This is a time to get in alignment on earth as it is in heaven. And he also said this to me, Daniel ch chapter 12, verse one starts with, at that time, Michael, the great prince, this is the archangel, who protects the people will arise. The Lord said, Michael is now arising. And we're seeing host level, not necessarily Michael himself, but we're seeing that level of warring angels come. And you, we need this, I'm telling you. We're about to see a change. And when I was having this encounter, the Lord says, and here's what you're gonna need to do. Because I said, Lord, because that was, remember I said in December, I was having these high highs and low lows. I was getting my butt kicked. You know, the enemy was hitting me really hard during those uh, couple of weeks while I was getting this revelation. The Lord said, hey, listen, tell my people, you have to put on the armor of light. I put on the armor every day, you know. I put on the armor of the Lord, but you have to put on the armor of light from Romans 13, 12. This is a strategy. The night is nearly over. See, people are in the dark night of the soul, right? This is what the Lord said. Romans 13, 12, the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. And the Lord said to me, that's why we were going through judgment or, you know, we were going through the enemy hitting us is because, you know, we're coming into agreement with the deeds of darkness, knowingly or unknowingly, grumbling, uh, speaking against people, those types of things. Uh, can be the deeds of darkness. So the Lord wants you right now to get out of that dark night. The, the Romans 13, 12, dark night of the soul is ending. And we need to put aside anything that we've done, complaining, grumbling, doubt, unbelief, uh, pride, all that stuff. Put that aside and put on the armor of light. So every day I put on the, the, uh, you know, the armor, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. I put on the armor of the light, the light of the Lord. I tell you, that's what you're going to need to do right now. And if you're hearing my voice, no matter what has happened to you, if you're hearing me right now, the good news is you made it. There's, you've gotten through 
the biggest test, which was to survive and not be, you know, out of the kingdom, not be out, that you've made it through. And no matter what condition you're in, or you're in right now, the Lord says he's going to do this. Begin to put on that armor of light every day. And uh, the book of your purpose is going to open. So he said this, the, this year, going to be like Luke 3 and 4. The book of life is going to open over you. He's told me it's the year of the Lord's favor. He, uh, that, that means that there's a favor of the Lord instead of, you know, being uh, buffeted, or, uh, you know, hit around. We're going to move into favor. The Lord is going to move and bring healing in your life. Watch for th Luke 3 and 4 to open. That's where the power and baptism of the Holy Spirit is going to come. That's when the heavens are going to open. That's when your book of life is going to suddenly be apparent to you. That Also, we're going to see uh, this thing about God speaking to you a little bit more clearly about who you are, what you're called to do. Angels are going to be assigned to you. The wilderness is going to be ending. The dark night of the soul is going to be over. And like Jesus in Luke 24, your book of life is going to open and... He read the words from Luke, uh, from Isaiah. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he's anointed you to preach the good news, to proclaim the good news to the poor. He sent you to bind up the brokenhearted. He sent you to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. I tell you, even though you might be there right now, get out. It's time to get out of that dark place. It's time to step out of the dark night of, Revel, of Romans 13, dark night. And it's time to step out of the time of darkness and step out into the light of the Lord. Put on a light of armor and you will not. It will shine in darkness, I'm telling you. Let me pray and activate this. Lord, we thank you. Wow, it was an action pack. Woo! Yeah, it was a very action-packed word. And this is only a portion. I wrote, I wrote a book already. I, I wrote a, several, like an eight-chapter book on this, which I'm not going to release this year. I release one every year, but I, release, I wrote the book in, in, uh, at Rosh Hashanah this year. The Lord said, he gave me the strategy. He says, I want you to activate this over people. So I activate this right now. I activate the Luke 3 and 4 over you. I activate the book of life to open. I activate your eyes to see and your ears to hear. I just say right now, come out of the dark night of the soul and put on the armor of light each day. I speak right now to those who have been slain on the battlefield, those who have felt like you've lost. In fact, I just feel like there's a uh, this is a rededication time. If you've never received Jesus in your life or... If you felt like you're hopeless, you don't. You, maybe you've been wounded, uh, something's happened. Just want to make that commitment right now to Jesus Christ. I want to call forward those people. I tell you, I'm having an altar call. I've never done this on a webcast, but I felt like the Lord is moving right now to call people into the light. Call people into the light, out of the dark night of the soul. If you've never received Jesus, you can do it right now. Just ask forgiveness of your sin. Invite him into your life and he will be your Lord. I tell you this, if you already have and you felt like you've been beat up and you're in, uh, you know, that you, we're talking about proclaiming freedom for the captive. If you feel like you're captive or you're released from darkness to prisoners, you feel like that's you. I just want to say, come into the light right now. You can rededicate with this prophetic word. And um, I would recommend, like what I've been doing, I've been getting through each day with communion and it's been, it's been an interesting time. But I want to say the Lord is releasing something right now. I saw people coming to Jesus, 30-year-olds, 40, 20s, it didn't matter, all over the world right now. And I activate this. I activate this word. I prophesy into your spirit all those places that the enemy has hit you. Every one of them, the Lord is going to redeem. You're going to be repaid. And you're going to see something happen like you haven't seen before. So, Lord, I pray right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, wow, wow. Um, <laughs> DougAddison.com is my website. You can um, follow my daily prophetic words. I do. I'm just as surprised as anybody at their accuracy. Turns out I'm known all over the world now for my daily prophetic. And I have a spirit connection. That's what this is. It's a webcast I do each month. But I also have a spirit connection blog. It's my prophetic blog on my website. And the Spirit Connection podcast. So you can hear... This, you can watch this video 
you can hear the weekly podcast where I, I release prophetic words, do teachings, and the prophetic blog. It's a powerful thing. So you can get the daily, weekly, and monthly just by signing up at our website uh, and, uh, uh, and following us on uh, Twitter and Instagram at the, uh, I think it, it is, Doug T. Addison, and Facebook, The Doug Addison. I'm excited. I tell you, I'm so excited. Like I said, I wrote the book every year since uh, 20... I can't remember the exact, oh, 2015, I had a visitation of an angel who came in and gave me this anointing so that I could have, because I had had this, this Issachar anointing, which is the daily prophetic. You know, I can know what's going on, but it was hard to put in a book. Then this angel came in in 2015 and I was able to do it. I wrote um, three prophetic forecasts, volume one, two, and three. And every year, right after Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the Jewish holidays, in September was last year. I wrote the book in two weeks. I wrote a book, but then the Lord said, I don't want you to publish it. He said, I want you to now release this out to people because a book doesn't give impartation. He said, the, the words that I just released, which was a piece, that was just a page of the book, pretty much, a couple pages, maybe, a, uh, maybe three pages of the book. But he said, I don't want you to release the book I want you to release it in your podcast, in your webcast, and everywhere you go, I want you to speak these messages and also do some deeper training on it so that people get it in their spirit. So that's what I'm going to be doing in in, uh, January. You're going to see two Spirit Connection podcasts. I do these for free, and you're going to see some blogs come out. I've already recorded them because I heard the Lord, you know, get this into people's spirits, you know, about talking about the books of life. And understanding the book of life, it's so important. Now, I recorded those before I had this encounter. I'm saying, the Lord had me do it. So we're going to be doing a, uh, the first time I've ever done this. Again, I'm launching these for free, you know, these different types of things. But we're going to do one of them is a paid training that's going to take you deeper for those who want to go into a school of ministry with me online. And it's... um, it's going to be Saturday, January 19th, 10 a.m. to noon. And it's two-hour live interaction, impartation Q&A with me. And it's uh, going to be, a, uh, you know, basically opening, the name of it is Opening Your Book of Life, How to Reveal and Activate Your Destiny. And this is where I take the prophetic forecast that I've been telling you about, these prophetic words, this is a piece of it. I will go deeper into the encounters I will go deeper into understanding your book of life, how to open it, how to remove any curses that might be holding it back. This is different than anything else I've ever done. People ask me that. I thought you've done this. This is in the context of this prophetic word for this year. And I'll be talking about activating angels, different things like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And you can go to DougAddison.com forward slash open book. Or right now, if you're listening to the webcast for the next two hours, uh, you can get a discount. It's normally $37, uh, but it'll be $32, $5 off. Hey, this is cheaper than Starbucks. And it, I tell you, you get the, uh, you'll get any forms that we might have. You'll get the impartation, the chance to ask questions. You don't have to be there live if you've happened to have taken these before. A lot of people know it's very powerful. All right. I want to go into a time. I can give you a chance, first of all, uh, if you want to... Uh, to donate to us, we are a nonprofit organization, and uh, we reach people all over the world, over 200 nations now. I found out that the nations are following us and and getting this message of the Lord out there. So you can donate if you if you feel inclined. You can do it by text at four five eight 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 the word L O V E to four five eight eight eight, or go to dougaddison.com forward slash give and. Uh, you could, there's different ways that you can uh, give on there or become a partner with us if you feel God calling you. I do a par- partner mentoring video every month. I also, we have a Facebook partner mentoring group on the Facebook page with a coach uh, that can help you, it knows all my stuff. And I pray for the partners every single day. So, you know, consider that. Now, we're going to do a little bit of QA of going over and Pam, who's our partner coach. She's been with us for a very long time, and she knows my message inside and out, been a prayer warrior for us. Pam's in the chat room with me right now, and she's 
just put in some uh, some Q and A. But I'm gonna take a sip of water here. All right, here's some questions. Polly says, "I want the Lord to show me my life first. How can I do that?" Well, I would do this is I would get specific time. You know, if you pray, a lot of people pray and just ask questions. You know, they just, I mean, not, they just bring their prayer list, you know, and like a laundry list. And they'll, ah, you know, but what you have to do is develop hearing or listening prayer. If you develop listening prayer, this happened to be about 10 years ago, even you know, as a prophetic person, the Lord says, you know what? I've been trying to give the answers to what you're praying about, but you're doing all the talking. And so I started to slow down and listen to the Lord. And there's ways you can do it. So I would, again, I like to take communion. And I, I would slow down and ask the Lord to speak to you. And each day for the next week or whatever you need to do, however you can do it, ask. That's all you want to do. You can pray your other prayers, but just ask the Lord to speak to you. Maybe even open the Bible and see if it, if it lands on somewhere that, that stands out. Begin to pray and listen to songs and, and you know, surround yourself in an, in an atmosphere. That's what I have to do as a seer. I have to actually create the environment, and I do that. I use Alexa and nothing, and uh, she's probably going to say something. I use Alexa and uh, to play my morning worship. I have these different types of things. I, I set the the environment, and then I use my iPhone with, with I, you know, with, um, Use your cell phone, get some verses, start tracking verses that God speaks to you. And if you want your life verse, you can start right now by using Luke 421. You start right there. Just use that for now. That's a great question. Um, Assam asked, 2018 was a hard year. Yes and amen. Yes, indeed. How can I get the energy and hope back? I tell you, it was a hard year. And, you know, I was listening to some of the you know, the, the things about on uh, the news looking back over the year, you know, and the pretty much was a year of disasters. And that's why when I came on the broadcast, I had a prophetic word that wasn't even written down. The Lord had just given it to me. He says, don't look back. So it was a difficult time. Yes, it was. Let's acknowledge that. And Isaiah 43 uh, is that he's doing something new. Isaiah 43, 18, he's doing something new. Do not look to the past. Don't look back. Now, look to the future with what God's doing. Ask the Lord to heal. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. That's a proverb that I suddenly forgot which one it is, but you can, you can Google it and find it. But it's Proverbs uh, 13, 7. I don't want to get the Bible police after me. I don't want to misquote it, sorry. It just slipped my mind. But I pray it every day. But here's what you do. Begin to pray over hope deferred, because that's what you just said. Hope deferred makes your heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. So begin to ask the Lord. Don't look back at the past. Don't hang out at the old tombs of death. Begin to go. Notice that when, when Mary went to the tomb of Jesus, when he had... He had died and they put him in the tomb, right? And this is in John 20. Read it. You'll see that she's peering into the tomb. And the disciples went back home, but she went. She stayed there crying in her pain. But it was empty. That tomb of death was empty. But there were two angels in it. I tell you, you're so prophetic here. There were two, Every time you have a rough time, God's going to send angels to you. It might take time. Like, like when Daniel took 21 days to get him. It might take some time. But he's going to send you angels. And Jesus was not in that darkness. That was the loss she was looking into in the tomb. He was 180 degrees behind her. And she had to do a 180 and listen to me. Read it for yourself. When Jesus comes to you, when he, you know, he comes into your life, he's doing something new. You might not recognize it at first. She did not recognize him in his new form. He looked like a gardener. And when God comes and does something new, you might not recognize it at first. And that same thing in John 21, when uh, Peter, James, and John go fishing, Jesus stood on the shore. They didn't realize it was Jesus because he was doing something new. So God's going to do something new right now. Assam and anyone else who's struggling, I want you to consider 
not looking back. Don't hang out at the tomb of your past. Let the Lord open things up. Get out of this. Get out of your situation. Do something new. I've been doing this. I've been trying to get out of like when I, I feel down or I feel locked in. All right, then I'm going to go outside and walk and pray. I'm going to do something. Weather might not permit it, but you know, we're used to where you're living. But I'm just saying, do something. Take some steps. Ask God. I, I take communion decrees and verses each day and I see a breakthrough. Uh, Lydia asked this. I was getting huge dreams and revelations in September and October and suddenly it stopped. Did I do something wrong? Probably not. Is I was the same with me. I was getting stuff September, October. My dream life dried up. That's why I said I had one dream pretty much in, in December 2nd. Uh, that was a dream that I had. It was, it was quite unusual because my dream life did dry up. And that's because Lydia and others like you during September and October was the Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles all at the same time. It was a time when the heavens were open in September and October. Things got released to you. Then you need to then contend for it. That's why it dries up and you have to contend for the book that's going to open over you. So you didn't do anything wrong. You need to just kind of move forward into what God has for you right now. Here, Deborah has this when you see angels, is it okay to ask them questions or is it better just to watch? Well, uh, make sure they're from the Lord because some of them masquerade. Uh, and I usually ask the Holy Spirit. If they're, if they're interacting with you, yes, it is. Uh, normally, I don't really talk to angels myself. It's not, not that I can't. It's just that there's so much going on. It depends on the angel. If it came there to give you information, watch for their purpose. Because if it's a warring angel, angel, you don't need to talk to a warring angel. You need to just receive what it is. If it's an angel of help, so you want to receive its help. If it's an angel of revelation, you need to ask the Lord to show you what it is so you can come into agreement with it. But it's, it's okay to interact with them as long as you test the spirits and make sure it's of the Lord. Sam asked this, uh, why should I ask the seven spirits of the Lord to do when, when we pray? Why do you ask? Well, because it's power, you know, it's uh, the seven spirits of the Lord will come in because we will, you need wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And so that um, we ask this, you know, we can, you can ask the Lord to, to bring you those things, but they actually exist. These are actual uh, uh, spiritual beings in heaven. But if you want to just pray and ask for those things, then you don't have to ask for the seven spirits of the Lord. Ask for wisdom, you know, counsel, uh, wisdom and might, counsel and knowledge and fear of the Lord. You can ask for those same things. It's the same thing. I'm just putting uh, a, uh, a relationship in with it because that helps you. If you make it a relationship like with the Holy Spirit, if the spirits of the Lord, it makes it more real in your life, more personal. All right, here's uh, one last question. Laddie asked this. How do you know if, if we're experiencing something from God or something uh, that is just a distraction? Well, that's when you need to learn to discern. And uh, learning to discern uh, is, is, is something that is it's a major thing that really uh, people don't understand. So I did a free, I have a free webinar that uh, it's, it's uh, how to learn to discern. It's 45 minutes and it's online. You can go to DougAddison.com forward slash. Uh, I forgot all of this. Uh, can you guys type it in? I can't remember. I've been on vacation for 10 days and I, for, I forgot the, the extension uh, of that web uh, that free webinar. Or you can go to my website. I tell you, you'll see it right there. One of the banners are going to come across and the free website, the free webinar on, is that you or uh, me, God, is something along those lines is, is to know how to learn to discern and i'm kind of kind of drunk in the spirit at the moment sorry i'm getting remember my own material at the moment but i do offer this how to learn to discern where we walk you through that all right i want to do this right now i want to do the impartation lord we ask now to bring the things that i've been saying here 
I pray, Father, that you would bring the spirit of wisdom, revelation, counsel, knowledge, the fear of the Lord. I pray, Lord, for the activation of this prophetic word. I pray, Father, for those who have never heard your voice in any way. I pray that you would speak. I pray for dreams and visions. I pray for things to turn around now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember to sign up for the uh, the open your your book is going to open your book of life is going to open uh, online training and also watch for the prophetic words that are going to be coming out this month on my web uh, my uh, website I've got a drunk in the spirit sorry Lord bless everybody now lift us up in Jesus name Amen God bless you see you soon.